I like cotton wool on better than, than, than dirk because cotton is a reluctant hero and he's not perfect. Whereas Dirk just gets on my nerves because he's just too good looking and too smart and he gets everything right all the time. I've been a Dirk Pitt fan for a lot of years, but I will say that my hero is different than Dirk. There's no question about that. Uh, my hero does have flaws. He makes mistakes. He, he underestimates people. He overestimates people. He, uh, he jumps in a little too quick sometimes. He, uh, he makes some judgment errors. I mean, he's just like us. He makes mistakes, you know, and I wanted, our, I wanted my hero to have those kinds of qualities in there. So you're never quite sure what Cotton's going to do. One thing about Dirk Pitt, you always know he's going to make the right choice. He, yeah. he always makes the right choice. And that's, that's the charm of Dirk Pitt. But in, I'm hoping the charm of my guy will be that he's a little more like us. Definitely a reluctant hero. Yeah, he, he's got a wife. He's got an ex. Well, he's got an ex-wife. You know, and he's got a child. He's got a 15-year-old boy. He's got some parenting problems with that boy. Uh, there's a you know question. That, you know, he's not even the natural father of the child, and his wife lied to him for many years about that. He's got things he's got to deal with. He's got everyday problems that we deal with while he's dealing with these extraordinary problems. And that's what I wanted from him. I wanted him to be a human being. He quit the Magellan Billet early because he'd had enough. Oh, no, the Magellan Billet was? Was a, a, a division of the Justice Department. I made it up. It's a fictional division that he worked in. He was a lawyer. He worked for them. And they did some very covert kinds of things in there. And he quit. Uh, and in fact, in 2000, and nine, we're going to explore more why he quit. We're going to learn a lot more about what happened when he quit in the 2009 story. But he, he got out, and he, he loves books, and he wants to run a bookshop, so he moves to Copenhagen and, and starts his life over. So it's, it, like I said, he's a lot like all of us, and that's, that's really what I was striving for. Let's, let's talk about the, the other mass, big masculine character in, in this, and, and that's uh, Alexander. Because uh -huh. um, I didn't, I didn't, I thought I knew something about him, but but I didn't. So tell, give me the short history. Amazing guy. Uh, Twenty-one years old. He amasses an army. He crosses into Asia. He spends the next twelve years marching twenty-three thousand miles and conquers the world. Uh, incredible. No one has ever been able to do that since. Uh, Alexander was a Greek who became a Persian. He was the first international ambassador. He was the first to mix cultures. He believed he didn't he didn't come in and dominate and take over a society and force them all to become Greek. Just the opposite. He came in and adapted their customs into his culture, and for the and basically sowed the seeds for Western civilization. Western civilization begins with Alexander the Great as he merges in these cultures together and takes the best from both. And, you know, to this day, you know, we, we still feel the remnants of what Alexander did. Now, he died quickly and suddenly at the age of 33, and uh, everything that he created, unfortunately, disappeared after he died because his empire was dissolved, basically, and his, and his generals took over the area. What, what began at that point was the Hellenistic Age. The Hellenistic Age, as I said, sowed the seeds for Western civilization, and, and that went on for you know several hundred years. And you know Alexander's you know shadow still casts very very greatly, but his body disappeared in the fifth century after Christ, and no one's ever seen it since. And that's what I thought was fascinating: where did this body go? What happened to this body that was venerated? It was a it was a place of worship in the ancient world, and gone. And so I think that's the very thing I look for in all of my stories. You've got a couple of villains in this. Let's start with the, the Venetian, um, what do they call themselves? Uh, the Venetian League. Yeah. Yes. That's a group of business people who basically just want to be left alone. They're not interested in taking over the world. They're not interested in anything. They're just interested in making money. And they're tired of government regulation. They're tired of all of this stuff. And they want a place where they can flourish. They want a place where they can thrive and no one's going to you know, tax them out of existence or regulate them out of existence. And so they hook up with uh, the other villain, Irina Sovestina, who is head of the Central Asian Federation, which I have created in this book. And they come together and, they, and the Venetian League wants one thing, but Sovestina wants something entirely different. And that conflict is interesting because we not only have conflict between Malone and the bad guys, but we have conflict among the bad guys themselves, which makes the story even more suspenseful. 
So uh, do I get a little hint of next year's book? Can little you tell hint, me the territory roughly? A little hint of next year's book will be we're going to deal with what happened to Cotton's father. We're going to find out what happened to his father 38 years ago. And that has great relevance to something that's happening today. And we're going to explore all about what happened to Cotton's daddy. And um, I can't tell you the title because they'll kill me on that one. That one, Random House, will get me on. I'm not allowed to, to do that yet. But I will say that it's a, it's a, it's a very, very interesting treasure. I feel like a, an addict who's just been given a fix from his pusher but is already looking for his next one. <laughs> That's very kind, Debbie. The book is The Venetian Betrayal. I've been speaking with the author Steve Barry and The Venetian Betrayal, published by Ballantine Books.